2019 Toyota Corolla XSC 2.0 CVT transmission fluid change. Uh, so basic things you're going to need to do this service. Uh, you should have a scan tool that can read your transmission temperature. That'll make it a lot easier. Uh, you'll also need a 24 millimeter socket to take off the fill bolt. You're also going to need a 10 millimeter uh, Allen bit for the drain plug and a six millimeter Allen bit for the tube inside of the drain port. Uh, so first thing you're going to do, I have all the wheels off because I'm doing a tire rotation as well. This panel here covers this area up in here. There's a couple push clips and there's a bunch underneath. Uh, when you're taking that off, you're going to want to also take off the undershield, which is held in place by uh, like one or two 10, 10, 10 millimeter bolts and a bunch of those push clips all around the outside of it. So what you want to do, once you have those covers off, you're going to take your 24 millimeter and remove this fill plug, which is located right here. You want to make sure you take that off first to make sure that you don't start draining and that afterwards you can't get this off and then you're screwed. So this is going to have FE stamped on it. Uh, coincidentally, that is also the fluid that you should be using. Uh, don't use anything else except for this Toyota CVT FE fluid. Uh, so when you drain it, when you first take out your drain plug, after you remove your fill bolt, this will be your drain plug. Like I said, 10 millimeter hex bit goes right there. When you take that out, You'll probably only get maybe half a quart out of it. Uh, once that slows down, you're going to take your 6 millimeter Allen. And you can stick this up inside that hole. And it'll take out this little plastic tube here. This basically sets where the level is. Um, so this should only be finger tight. You shouldn't need a wrench to unscrew this. You, I just stuck this bit right up in there and unscrewed it by hand. When you put it back in, you're going to do it the same amount. You don't want to put a wrench on it. Just screw it in until it bottoms out. And that's it. You don't need to torque it or anything. So basically, once this is done dripping like it is now, I'm about to take this plastic bit. And like I said, just screw it back in by hand. Don't need to put a wrench on it because you'll end up stripping it. After that... You're going to go ahead and put your drain bolt back in as well. And then what I do, I make sure I have my pan nice and clean before I start this. Make sure it's nice and clean and empty. And what I'll do, I have these containers here with measurements on them. So what I'll do is I'll empty that drain pan into here. It should be probably right around the four quart mark, but you want to make sure you see like exactly how much you took out. Assuming this is your first time doing it, there's no leaks or anything. It should be around four quarts. Uh, so like I said, you're going to have this CVT FE fluid. Uh, this comes in a four liter container. I got two just in case. If we have a little left over, that'll be more we can use later on down the road. So once you have your little plastic tube back in and your drain bolt back in you're going to go ahead and take that new cvt fluid if you get out around four quarts we're going to measure this to see where we're at you want to pump back in using a transfer pump right into that port you're going to put back in i want to say maybe about half a quart more than you took out that's a safe bet and then what you're going to do after you put in about half quart more than you took out you're going to put this plug back on. You're going to get in your car. Hopefully, like I said, you have a scan tool. You're going to start the car, run it through the gears, put it in reverse, wait a second, neutral, wait a second, 
drive, wait a second, and just continue to go throughout the gears, let it cycle. Then you're going to bring up your scan tool. With it running, you're going to look up your AT oil temperature. So what you want is you need to wait till this gets to about 95 to 113. Once it gets to 95 degrees, what you're going to do while it's still running, you're going to come back under here. And you are going to remove this 10 millimeter bolt. Again, like I said, while it's running, seems weird, I know, but you're going to take out this drain bolt while it's running and what you're going to see is you'll get a little fluid coming out of it and then after a couple seconds you'll see it start kind of glugging and what that is when the transmission is at that temperature it'll set the level by this tube once the fluid comes down to about the height of this tube that's where it needs to be so that's when you'll see the fluid kind of start glugging out and once that's starts glugging out you don't have to wait till it's a slow trickle you don't want to get all of it out but once it starts glugging you know it's right about to that height of that tube there where it needs to be once it starts glugging like that go ahead throw your drain bolt back in you should be good to go if by chance you take this out and you don't get any fluid coming out that means you don't have enough fluid in there so go ahead pump more fluid in and start the process over again. Like I said, as long as there's no leaks and you're putting in a little bit more fluid than you took out, you should have a little fluid coming out of there. Take that out, wait for it to, you'll see a steady stream of fluid once it starts kind of glugging. Then you're gonna go ahead and throw your bolt back in. Button her up, should be good to go. If you got any questions, let me know. Gearhead Garage.